Hey guys, welcome back. This is my second Pulp Basics video in Python. I just wanted to clarify something I didn't talk about in my first Pulp Basics video. These videos are not going to be teaching how to do linear programming, so hopefully you have um, background knowledge of how these problems work, how to set them up, um, but maybe you want to actually solve them rather than just setting them up on paper. Um, and these videos are going to show you how to do that in Python rather than using Excel or Ample. Um, and Pulp is a really great package um, for doing linear programming problems. Um, and so far, I've really liked using Pulp. Um, so first, um, in this video, we're going to talk about setting our problem variable, which is going to hold all of our data. Um, so in the previous video, we had this facility location problem. And basically, we are minimizing um, our costs, our activation costs and our transportation costs, um, and we have two decision variables. So this is a mixed integer program, um, mixed integer problem, my bad. And um, so our first decision variable is this xij, and our second one is our yj. Um, so this one has two subscripts, and it is a continuous variable. It just tells us that right here, but you can tell also because it says the amount serviced from facility J to demand point I. Um, and then this second decision variable um, is binary, and it's determining whether or not we are going to set a facility in a certain location, J. Um, and if you do set up a facility in that location, it gets the value i, and otherwise it is zero, and that's how binary works. Um, but so first we need to set this um, problem variable, and LP problem is a function we're going to use. There are two arguments. The first argument is the name, and then the second argument is whether this is a minimization or a maximization problem. So we use LP minimize or LP maximize. LP minimize is our default, so you can leave that blank if it is a minimization problem, but just go ahead and get in the habit of setting that. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. So let's call this variable prob, and let's say LP problem, and we are just going to call this facility, we need uh, double quotations, facility location. Um, and so make sure this name is something descriptive, something that um, refers to your problem. So if this is like a blending problem or like a scheduling problem, you can call it scheduling, something like that. Um, so we're going to call this facility location. And then this second argument is LP minimize because we are minimizing um, our costs. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and comment that this is... Um, setting the problem variable. So again, this is going to hold all of our problem data. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is set our decision variables. And pay close attention to this part because it does get tricky. Um, so first we're going to start off with a binary decision variable. Um, so back to our problem, we have um, y subscript j. j is what they use um, to refer to the facility list. They use i to refer to our customer list, and that is up here, um, our five customers, three facilities. So again, we only have one set, and we want to just call this uh, use underscore VARS because um, again this is determining whether or not we are going to use um, a facility in that location so we're gonna say LP variable and I have that definition pulled up with the different arguments so this first argument is the name the second argument is the lower bound the third is the upper bound the fourth is what kind of variable this is and continuous is our default and then um, this last one I haven't used that yet, but it says use for column-based modeling relates to the variable's existence in the objective function and constraints. So um, we also need to say dot D-I-C-T-S because we are referring to these lists up here. Um, and let's call this service, and you do need double quotes again. Service. Oh, not service, my bad. Um, let's call this use location. Um, that just helps us um, 
see that this is the decision variable determining whether or not we are going to use that location. So questions we want to think about when we are setting this second argument. Um, we are going to think about which sets we're referring to and how many sets we are referring to. Um, in this case, we are deciding um, which facility to use. So we are referring to our facility set. Um, and also you can tell because there's only one subscript that there's only going to be, um, we're only going to need to use one of these sets. So um, this second argument, you need to type the name of the set that you already created up here. Make sure it is exactly the same. Um, this third argument, some questions you might want to think about is, is our decision variable continuous? Is it binary? Is it integer? And this is a binary variable. Um, and it, it tells you that. And um, so for setting our binary lower bound, we're going to say 0. And setting our upper bound, we're going to say 1. Um, and then finally, um, the argument that we need to use to specify that this is binary, we need to say LP binary. And just make sure you have that capitalization correct. Um, this next decision variable is a little more tricky. And I'm just going to comment right here. Um, you can just do this. You can say comma quotes and then say this is our binary decision variable. Or you could say something else um, that just is helpful sometimes. Um, so again, we're going to use LP variable dot D-I-C-T-S. And let's call this service because it's the amount being serviced from a specific facility to a specific customer. Um, so again, our questions we want to think about, which sets are we using and how many are we using? Um, in this case, it tells us we have two subscripts. Um, I is our cust for our customers, J is for our facilities. Um, it doesn't really matter if you whether or not you use I or J. Um, for customers or facility, but just make sure you keep that consistent. Otherwise, the problem um, is not going to be solved correctly. So what you want to do for this, we need to create two for loops since there are two sets. And we're going to say bracket parentheses i comma j. First, we're going to do a for loop for our i. So for i in, we already said we're going to use it, uh, i for customers, comma, new line. And make sure these for loops line up for J in facility. Again, make sure these are exactly the same name as our list. Um, you don't need another comma there. Bracket, comma, new line, um, and make sure this lines up. So far it's mattered for me. Um, and then um, it highlights showing that you're done with that. So zero, we're using zero because this is a continuous variable, but it also does have a lower bound, um, basically our non-negativity constraint. So later on, you'll see that we don't need to set um, a specific non-negativity constraint for our decision variables because we are setting that when we are defining the variables um, in Python. So we just want to say zero as our lower bound to make sure that this is not going to be a negative value. Um, let's do one more quick example. So um, in the video before I also had a diet problem. It was different types of ingredients and we are minimizing the cost um, and we also are uh, meeting certain restraints such as, um, or not restraints, we're meeting certain um, requirements such as a certain amount of calcium, energy, and protein in this diet. Um, but so basically our decision variables and that is um, the amount of each food to you. So we're going to call this food, foods underscore V-A-R-S. And we are going to use LP variable. Um, we're going to call this food. And then we need to refer to the specific list and that is our foods list. Um, and then the last thing, this was a continuous variable since it was the amount of food to use. 
Um, so we're just going to set our lower bound to zero. So this is a non-negative um, decision variable. So hopefully this video helped you guys understand how to set the problem variable and how to set our decision variables. Um, again, it is going to vary from problem to problem what kind of decision variables you use, but hopefully this gave enough information on the different types of variables and um, what to do when there are multiple subscripts. So the next video is going to be about setting our objective function and setting our constraints. Um, this That may have to be in two different parts, but um, go check that out to keep learning more about pulp and how to do linear programming in Python.